Uh, but I, at this point, I don't know um, the, the decision if we're going or not, or I don't even know if what the, what is it going to be like. Can you go there for a couple of uh, weeks, and then if we need you, can you come back? I mean, those are all things I'm sure Tommy knows, and or they're still working out. Quentin. How you doing, Scott? Pretty good. I was just going to ask first, um, on an update of Davies Bertans as well as Robin Lopez, two guys that I know had separate um, incidents, has Davies or Robin joined the team for practice? Uh, not yet. They're still going through uh, the, the protocols and hopefully soon. But they are, they are in market, uh, which is nice. And it's just going to take, I don't know how many days, but – there's the process they have to go through, and then there's a process of, of coming on the court in group workouts. And then there's also the process of us uh, getting our hands and eyes on them and see where they are, their baseline, because we still have some time to, to, to ramp up and get ready for the first game. So hopefully all that is a matter of uh, days, but like I said, you know, it's still in the process of going through all the protocols. And also, I want to say maybe a couple weeks ago, we talked to you about that three position, or maybe that was last week, time is flying. But specifically for Isak Bonga, a guy who started last year and played a lot of reps and got a lot of opportunities there. Have you seen him develop that three-point shot enough to justify you calling him a possible three and D guy on this team? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what we're working at. And he's just turned 21. So there's a lot of development in his future, but I like what he's able to do right now. It's still, he played, he played some good minutes, started some games for us last year. Uh, don't know who will be the starting three as at, at the moment. There's a bunch of guys uh, that will be fighting for that. Uh, but it's, it all remains to be seen once we get, you know, we haven't really, today was one of our first days that we've had some really five on five uh, scrimmaging. We just stayed at the half court. Uh, but I think our guys are ready for that. So it's going to be, uh, more, more of that in the next couple of days. We're going into our first uh, exhibition game uh, in Brooklyn, but he's definitely a guy that the trajectory is becoming a three and D guy. Uh, but he has the ability. It's just he's going to have to continue to get stronger and continue to make you know work on his shot with all the reps that he's put in. But I like what he's about. He's definitely a big part of what we need to do going forward. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm guessing this is Neil with Hoop District. Hey, Coach, uh, I'm curious. Obviously, Brad has, you know, been able to play on the ball a lot more recently. How do you see and where do you see Russ being able to contribute when he's not on the ball? Um, Russell's a, a playmaker. He gets guys. He knows. He knows. Once he gets the familiar with our group, he knows their tendencies. And he gets familiar with really what we do. He knows some of the tricks that we like to run. And he's as good and as crafty as anybody in the league at that spot. Uh, they're going to – it's going to obviously take some, uh, some time to really get comfortable with one another. But I don't anticipate it taking too much time. They, they have – they're about the same things. And there's so many similarities on, on how they approach the game. And they understand uh, – all the little tricks of the game. They've both been in the league for a long time, over 20 years combined. Uh, but they're, the big thing about them that I, that I love, they're both winners. And winning basketball players understand that they need each other. And they also understand that we need the other three guys on the floor that, to help us uh, have success. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Ava? Hey, Scott. Um Wondering with the group you have on the floor, you, you spoke a lot about how you're, you guys aren't trying to get better on defense this season just by adding people, but you think there's a lot of things you can work on within the group. Have you been able to work on some of those things yet in camp and, and what, what, what's that uh, process been like so far? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely areas of improvement of some of the personnel that we brought in and then some of the experience that our players will have gained in the first year. And then some of the things that we as a staff will change up or implement uh, or find different ways to improve. 
Uh, we're just basically putting in the basic foundations. We're, we're waiting for everybody to be here before we can put some of the other things that we do. We, I thought we were one of the, uh, in the bubble, I thought we were pretty good with zone. So it's definitely, we have some of the, the makings of a, a good zone team. So we're definitely going to be putting that in as soon as we get the entire group together because we don't want to you know, put it in in two parts. But I, I, I see good improvement. I see the, the, some of our younger players last year came back. You can just see the experience, their confidence level that they've had. They're still, they're still young, they still, I mean, we all want them to be 26, 27 years old, be starting in their prime, but I think they, they've came back better players. And then you mentioned that the, you guys did five on five for the first time today. What were your, some, of, some of your overarching takeaways from that? Kind of like what, what I thought it would be, you know, it, the physicality, it was, the fouling was there. The, it was a little sloppy at times, but I, that, that's expected um, because I want our guys to be aggressive on both ends. So, um, but I think, you know, the next couple of days, uh, we will have more of it leading up to that first game. So it's going to be a great opportunity. I thought today was a perfect, perfect day to, to, to get in uh, some five on five, but the other guys handled it well, a little sloppy at times, but I think it was all due because we're not calling a lot of the fouls that you would you know, normally call. And I thought it was pretty good. Chris Miller. What's up, Scotty? How are you? Good, Chris. What's happening? Nothing. I wanted to ask you about the self, self-scouting the coaching staff and yourself. When you look back from a defensive standpoint, what are some of the things that were the correctables that you could apply this year? And then with a guy like Russ and kind of knowing – you know, the head of the snake on the defensive end, does that kind of change your philosophy going into this season? Well, yeah, I mean, he's one of the biggest, uh, most physical dynamic point guards in the league or league history, what he brings. Uh, you, you have added size. We have added size at that position now. So that's going to that's gonna be, uh, we're going to use that to our advantage. And I think the experience that our guys have had, we've, we've always, uh, and I challenge all of our coaches to always be critical of us first before we um, become critical on how our players are playing. And there's some things that we can change, but there's some things that they have to learn and go through. The learning curve, sometimes it's, 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 it's a slow process for some, faster for others. But I think adding the players, the pieces that we have, Along with, you know, Brad, I think Brad is going to be better defensively as well. Uh, but I, I want our, I want our backcourt to be uh, special on both ends of the floor because they, they lead the group. And, and I think if that happens, I think our entire group's going to be get better uh, as this season uh, comes along. I've heard you a couple of times talk about how surprised you were last year, how well offensively you guys performed. Was it from an efficiency standpoint, or was it the way that you guys kind of shared the ball that allowed everybody to eat? Yeah, when you have a, when you have a new group that haven't, has not played a lot of NBA minutes coming together, you, you, I mean, my fear was we wouldn't be able to, you know, get in the 80s, uh, let alone, you know, we were getting into 130s and 40s with all of our ball moving in. I thought we would turn the ball over a lot. We took care of the ball. We were a great passing team, high assists. Uh, high uh, passes that each possession. Uh, I like to continue that. Uh, now we have, you know, one of the best passing point guards and his speed and his ability to break down the defense at, at, at the speed that he does and to find the shooters that we can uh, give him on the floor. I mean, Bertans, uh, Brad, uh, TB, Rui's a much improved shooter. So he can have potentially in any given time, he can have four knockdown three point shooters on the floor. Thanks, Scotty. Thank you. Fred? Hey, Scotty. Um, you, you had previously mentioned that the starting spot at the three is basically an open competition. You named a few guys. Are you just looking for whichever of those people that are in that group, whichever one stands out the most, or are you looking for a specific type of skill set fit? that would, that would complement the other four starters the best when you eventually determine that spot? Well, you know, we have, we have a lot of different options. 
quite frankly. We have a lot of guys that bring a, something, you know, a little different. Uh, so I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to come down to um, what's the best fit for the starting group, uh, what's the best fit for the, the second unit. Um, but I think we have some pretty good choices. We have, you know, Troy, uh, Bonga, uh, Bertans, uh, Denny, Jerome. Uh, so we have some we have some pretty good choices. I haven't really thought about uh, any other guys, but there's always other guys too that are trying to make the team. Uh, but I think we have some pretty good choices and. I'm excited to see how it all unfolds the next couple of weeks. I'm not going to, and it's going to more than likely, it's going to be fluid. It's probably not. I mean, I'm pretty sure if you guys know this as well, um, we're locked in at one, two, and probably four and five. Uh, but I don't think we're going to always be locked in at that, that three spot. You know, maybe, it, maybe it's going to be, um, how we're playing, how that player is playing, and what the second unit. We're just trying to find quality minutes at all, all five positions uh, for 240 minutes of a game. Thanks, Scott. Troy? Hey, Scott. Uh, my question for you uh, today is regarding the uh, COVID-19 uh, protocols. How do you feel as the coach and the leader of the team about uh, just the comfortability factor of you know, all of the COVID-19 protocols for the first week of the season, as opposed to, uh, you know, when you were down in the bubble, when, you know, they had zero uh, negative, I mean, zero positive tests. So just just overall, how do you feel about, do you, do you feel safe and do the players feel safe? Yeah, I mean, we definitely feel safe. Uh, and we wouldn't be in this position. It's, it's definitely, um, we talk about it constantly. We watch, um, there's, there's going to be film sessions on, on things that we need to do. There's memos that the league has given out. There's things that I talk about, things that I do, things that I even implement in practice. I try to keep, you know, the social distancing and make sure everybody's wearing their mask and, and the hygiene is so important. We want to do our part. Uh, we know it's not going to always be perfect. And, and if, if somebody does come up, uh, with the positive, it's not like we're going to look down on them and, and be disgusted in it. It's just part of it. It's, um, it's a, a global problem that we're all trying to figure out. Uh, it's, a serious, uh, it's a serious problem that we're all trying to do what, what's right and what's best, and, but we're going to do our part. I mean, it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely going to be a season to adapt, and, and you have to adapt. You can't always it's not, it's not going to be even the travel. It's not going to be like it normally was on in the past. And, you know, what we're doing is we're working day to day to become normal eventually. And, but we have to be able to be, uh, do our parts uh, with all, of, all that we know from what the government uh, tells us, from what the NBA tells us, and our, our own personal performance team. They've done a good job of always keeping us informed. I appreciate that, Scott. Thank you. Uh, we'll take just a couple more. Ava, do you have a follow-up? Yes, I did, if I could. Um, Scott, I feel like I might know the answer to this, but with the shortened training camp, were there certain things that you guys might normally do to want to work on or prepare anything that you said that has to kind of go by the wayside or take back seat or that'll work itself out? Um, and I guess, if so, what were the things that you said we absolutely have to use these couple of weeks that we have to get this stuff hammered out other than the starting lineup maybe? Yeah, I mean, it, the, the good thing about our guys, uh, they came in in pretty good shape. So the conditioning uh, factor, which is critical, uh, they're, they're fine there. So we're just working on it. And then we got some wizard knowledge from the guys coming back, the guys that were in the bubble. And the, and the, the new guys that we brought in, they're all, they're all high level thinkers. And they've been around the league and, and they can figure things out and then our, our video staff has done a good job of putting our video clips together and, and sending out some blasts to all the guys and, and they, and they get to see it. Um, it's amazing what they, we have now. It's just trying to help all these dinosaurs like myself figure out this, um, how we can 
keep um, relating to the, the younger players. And, and what we've done, what we're done in that area is pretty cool. And I learned today was really neat on some of the things that that's available for all the coaches and players. But there's going to be things that we won't be able to put in, but we're going to be able to do it as the season goes on. And, and but we want to have our basic foundation. And that's going to be um, all remains to be seen what we can go from there. Congrats on learning about the new technology. I know, right? It's, it's amazing. It's really cool. Big deal. It is. I'm excited about it. All right, last question will go to Ben. All you millennials out there think it's pretty funny, huh? Hey, Coach, how's it going? Uh, some of the players mentioned how energetic and mature Denny has looked throughout the process. Can you just give us some general takeaways of today and, and uh, the growth that he's shown over the past couple of days? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a um, good player. I mean, really good, solid, tough. Uh, has a good presence. Um, he banged up his knee a couple of days ago. So today he just went through a, a, a few things, but I think it's nothing serious. I probably tomorrow he'll be able to go through most, if not all. Um, but yeah, I, I like his, I like his approach. I like, you know, I've always, I mentioned this all the time as you, as you coach a, a group of players that you really want to make sure that they understand the ins and outs of how to be a professional being on time, taking care of your body, eating healthy, getting proper sleep, being a good teammate, uh, making sure you're taking advantage of the coaching staff in the film room, uh, on the early in the practice floor, uh, late after practice. I can really say there's not one time I thought about, okay, I got to remind Denny to do this. He has it already. He's, he's obviously uh, well-versed with all of his coaching at, at, a, at a young age and he's obviously raised the right way. He's come in and really, really blended in. And a lot of times you don't blend in as a rookie. Uh, you kind of sometimes you, you, you stick out for the wrong reasons. Uh, but I, not one time um, I've had to really like pull him over to the side and make sure that he's well aware of what we need to do as, as, a, as a young player in this league. But I think he, he has a high IQ and he has, the, he has that just that desire to get better you can just see it in his eyes when you talk to him he has this determination which i love about him appreciate it what up mo what's going on chris i'm good man um just kind of give me your assessment of camp under these very unusual circumstances how are you uh getting better i mean for us they're not really unusual um you know you go to the gym go to work um it's honestly a lot of fun um this is a really cool group to be around with and um, high level of energy and um, yeah, everybody shows up to compete every day. So um, I'm super excited. Did you have uh, or has it happened yet where you look at Russell Westbrook on a fast break or a drill and think to yourself, Russell Westbrook plays on my team? Um, yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, I, but honestly, I feel I feel like that with with a bunch of players. But you know, like the, the NBA is so crazy. Like you don't you have to adjust so quick that you can't really give yourself time to do that. Um, it's my teammate now. You got to go with that, and you know what I'm saying. Like take it as it is and be the best version of yourself. So it's cool and all, but I'm kind of trying to move on from that um, blessed to be here vibe and um, do my job. Appreciate it, man. No problem. Good to see you or hear you. Chase. Hey, what's up, Mo? What's going on, Chase? Um, so I think it's pretty obvious the expectations for this team are going to be a little bit higher this year than they were last year. Um, you know, with Russell Westbrook instead of uh, John Wall was coming back from the injury. Um, what does that do for a young player like you where, you know, maybe minutes won't be as guaranteed as they were last year as you try to find a, a consistent role in the rotation? I mean, I, it doesn't mean any, it's not different. Like I'll, I'll show up to be the best version of myself every day. It don't matter what happens and no minutes are guaranteed at any point. I think you saw that last year. Um, I don't, I mean, expectation, that's something y'all talk about. Uh, we don't really like, you know, like we, we show up to work, compete hard every day and try to win as many games as we can. We don't really worry about that stuff too much. So, um, 
Yeah, I'm not really worried about that, honestly. Fred? Hey, Mo, how you been? How you doing? I'm good. Uh, I'm just curious um, if you had a main focus on your game in the off season. Uh, if so, how did you work on it? Or was it just a general, you know, going through major workouts and that was it? Um, I, the big thing for me this off season was, even though the circumstances were so different, to kind of establish a consistency um, with whatever it was. And um, I went home for a long period of time and kind of tried to be consistent with my work at one place and not travel around as much and um, focus a lot on my body because I realized that you can work as hard as you want in the summer and get better every day. If you hurt all season, you're not going to play. So I got to experience that uh, two years in a row. So I focused a lot on my body, try to get, um, yeah, be healthy for, for a whole season. That's kind of my goal. And, um, you know, obviously I work on basketball too. Everybody, I, obviously there are certain things, but I wouldn't, I work on this, I'm the player I am, you know, of course. I'm, I work on my shot. I work on everything. Decision-making probably something, especially when you're over there in Europe, the coaches, it's more reading the game rather than get up a million shots a day. Um, it's a different mentality. So I try to learn as much as I can when I was over there. Was was there any part of your body that was a specific focus? Was that a reaction to the ankle? So, uh, uh, was that was that was that a reaction to the ankle? I'll ask, or was were you kind of banged up? Um, well, I mean, I don't know if you know Fred, but like the body works as a whole. So, like I, you know, what I'm saying, like I try to stay healthy all over the place. Um, <laughs> no, of course, the ankle injury. Yeah, I understand, but um, no, everything. Honestly, just to be stable. I'm not the most athletic guy, you know, so I'm, I gotta be strong. I gotta be uh, solid with everything. And um, I work on everything. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Sorry for me. Thank, thank you, Mo. I appreciate it. Ava? Mo, I have no questions about your body. I'm sorry. Um, I'm wondering, but mentioned working on the consistency. How difficult can that be when you're, I don't know if you're working out with a, a coach, a trainer, another guy um, when you're at home, but just to kind of make yourself perform to the level, the same level that you want to hit every day. Is that something that you've gotten better with experience in the league? Like how, how difficult is that? I mean, I'm at, it's hard for anybody, I think. Yeah, it's really hard. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and act like I figured it out. But for me, what made it hard, too, was that I've never really worked out in the offseason in Germany. And as a young player, you're still trying to figure out how you, like, do your offseason, you know? So I'm still try, kind of trying to figure that out. But this year, my first challenge was to find the right guy, obviously, and have, be on the same page with what you want to achieve in the offseason on your body and all that stuff, um, as Fred mentioned. And... Um, <laughs> Uh, so, and then another thing was also like, you got, coach always talks about, you got to work really hard, but you also got to be smart. It doesn't matter. And you see that in the league, like the vets, they know how to work. Like, they're not gonna, just going to go in the gym and tire themselves out for eight hours a day. Um, they know exactly when they take off and when they work and when they work hard and when they rest. And that's something you got to experience for yourself and figure out for yourself. And I think, um, that helped me a great deal this summer too, to not get impatient in like the first three weeks of, of the summer thinking, oh, I got to do everything in three weeks now. Like understanding it's a long period and you work hard when you work and when you rest, you rest and um, take care of your body. So that's kind of what I've tried to, to differentiate. And then obviously you guys added a, a couple bigs and Anthony Gill who's here and I know Robin hasn't arrived for practice yet, but what are you excited about either that relationship developing or, or adding them into the mix, those two specifically? I mean, in general, any, any new guy, I don't care if they're big or if they're wings or guards. Like, it's just cool to that I'm here for another year and, like, get to know new people, get to build new relationship uh, ships. And I've, the time I've been here, I've, I feel like they've done a great job of bringing guys in that, have, that are great guys, honestly. And... Um, that's fun to be around and to learn from them and be a good teammate. It makes it, it, makes it so much easier to be a good teammate. And um, yeah, I'm happy that I'm, that I'm privileged enough to be in that position. Cool. Thanks, Mo. 
Max? Hi, Mo. How are you? Um, I was wondering what's your level of concern or confidence um, in terms of the season being played in, 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 in a pandemic scenario you know, without a bubble now, like with all the traveling and, and all the precautions being taken. What's, what's your take on that? It's a great question. Um, I guess, I mean, we've all, it's, it's a challenge. And I think um, it's, it's super interesting because everybody's kind of on, on its own, you know, everybody got to take responsibility for themselves, watch themselves what they do off the court, um, how they spend their times, how they spend their times around their families. And um, it's going to be interesting, man. I hope, like, I, I know there are going to be setbacks and people are going to think what's going on and they're going to be positive cases. That's just going to, ha unfortunately, how it's going to knock on wood. But you just, like, somehow expect that when you look at football and everything that happens. It's just a matter of how you treat that, how you react to that, and also that you don't overreact and kind of try to live with it as, and control what you can control, you know. Um, you just got to do your part. It's, I imagine it being hard with a family. I'm by myself, so... All I do is watch my TV show at night, so I don't really have anything else to do. But I, if you have a family that goes to school and all that, I, I imagine that to be harder. Thank you. All right, we'll take a couple more. Brianna? Hey, Mo. Um, I'm just wondering about, um, kind of piggybacking off of the other questions, um, about your routine. What are some of the things that you took from the bubble that now you're still applying to um, to your routine now, even though it's not in a, you know, confined environment anymore? Honestly, I'm pretty happy the bubble's over. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> um, I was impressed the way they did it. Um, that I don't want to take anything away from that, but I will say um, just comparing it with the state now, it's just different. It's uh, you can't get away from the game, and I think that's a big part of my development for me as a as a human being and as a player. So um, that was a big challenge for me. So I'm honestly like trying not to think about the bubble as much as I, if I can. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just trying to enjoy the moment as much as I can. And the routines before games stay the same, but um, has nothing to do with the bubble. It's 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 that was a different beast to me. Neil. Hey, Mo, hope you're doing well. Obviously, yeah. you played against Cassius in college uh, in that Michigan-Michigan State rivalry. I'm Ooh. curious, Cassius Winston. Um, I'm curious, what was your guys' relationship back then? And have you guys had any fun about uh, those times now that you got the teammates again? Like, it's funny, like, they think we can't get along because I don't know why, because it's the Michigan-Michigan State thing. Um, we actually recruited Cash as my freshman year, uh, and then he didn't come. And I remember we were like pissed about it and all that stuff. But honestly, like that's like all cute and all that. Like it's it's a real thing when you're in college. But now, man, I'm like you. You ever seen him play? Like that. That's so much fun to play with that guy. And obviously, I'm excited to be on the team with him. Um, he's a great guy. Um, we talk. Obviously, we we talked about our games that we had against each other. I. I won't get tired talking about them but because they were always in my favor, so I don't care talking about that. Um, but, no, I'm excited for Cassius to be here. He's a great point guard, great leader, um, plays with a lot of swag, and a good kid to be around. So I'm excited to, to be with him on the team. Thanks, Mel. All right, Mel, appreciate you. Peace. Put your mask on. Thank you. What up, Jerome? Going on. Good. How, how much more comfortable are you now as opposed to when you got here back in February, what seems like two years ago? I'm pretty comfortable. Um, just, you know, comfortable with the guys, comfortable with the coaches, comfortable with our schemes and our coverages, um, our plays I'm familiar with. And, you know, I think having the opportunity to bubble, you know, allowed me to get more comfortable, you know, with everything. What was your biggest takeaway from the bubble about yourself and, and trying to apply it to this year, trying to get those rotational minutes? Just to go out there and play, go have fun, um, and let the chips fall where they may. Fred. Hey, Jerome, how you doing? Um, 
I, uh, I was just wondering over the off season, did you have a particular focus that, that you worked on that you particularly wanted to improve on coming into the year? Uh, just to get better at basketball. Chase. Hey, Jerome. Um, you're from Raleigh and you played for Garner Road AIU, I believe. Um, what was your reaction to the John Wall trade? Because I would imagine part of you, you know, I, I would imagine he meant a lot to you growing up in that area and maybe you even look forward to playing with him. Yeah, um, I mean, John is, he's been a catalyst for our city, you know, just putting us on, you know, across the world, you know, so having the opportunity to be around him was great. Um, but as I know, it's the business and, uh, you know, I wish nothing but the best. You know, I want to see him be just the same John Wall as he was before. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. And um, we'll, we'll be friendly when we're in uh, when we're in Raleigh. And you didn't get to actually play with him in a game, but, you know, maybe you played against him in practice. Obviously, I'm sure you interacted with him. Is there anything that you take away from, you know, actually being up close and personal with John? Yeah, he's a competitor. He wants to win. He wants to go hard. Um, and and he, he's like, <clears throat> his prep time, you know, was, was two years to come back from that injury. But he was just, he was scratching to get on the court, you know, and being able to go with him, go hard, and, you know, see him put it all back together. I'm excited for him to get back on the court, too. Quentin? What's up, Jerome? No, no. How do you imagine, I mean, being on this team last year when you did join, and obviously this offseason they have added Russell Westbrook, how do you imagine this team being different this year um, with that dynamic of him and Bill as well as your role in that? Um, I mean, our, our pace is going to be unbelievable with him and Ish. Um, the points we should be able to score between him and Brad and the rest of our scorers and shooters that we have. Um, you know, I think we have a great opportunity to be a great offensive team, but also a great defensive team that will lead to easy offense for us. And also, has your dad ever forgiven you for uh, doing that edge spear into the pool this summer? <laughs> uh, he, he, he forgave me. He forgave me. The water was cold, but uh, <laughs> that was a good time. All right. Appreciate you. Um, Neil? Hey, Jerome. Hope you're doing well. I'm curious for you. You take defense very seriously. That's a big part of the game that you hold close to yourself. How do you, in today's NBA, is there a specific mindset that you have to have to play good defense, or is it just all just intangibles and physicality, or is it a mix of everything? Um, I, I definitely think it's a, a good mix. Um, one, you, to grow men in our leagues, you definitely have to be physically strong. Um, but there's also great thinkers in our league. So you need to be thinking on the defensive end, you know, what they're doing to score, um, how they want to operate, who their scorers are, you know, who their shooters are, who wants to put the ball on the floor, um, things of that nature. And, and that's part of, you know, knowing where you need to be on the court and taking advantage of those opportunities and have an IQ on the defense end. Thanks, Drew. Um, Daryl? Hey, Jerome, is there any concerns about a possible lack of chemistry if there are games that may be postponed or canceled due to any concerns with COVID-19? Uh, lack of chemistry as far as people sitting out, is what you're saying, on our team? As far as people sitting out or not having a lot of t play time between games due to possible cancellations or movements of games due to what's going on with the virus? Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's definitely going to be that uh... – could be that, that little slight hiccup, you know, at times. Um, but as far as our team, I think we have a lot of great IQ players and a lot of guys that can dribble, pass, and shoot. So, you know, the offenses that we run, you know, a lot of guys can be interchangeable, you know. So I think it's going to be a great opportunity for guys, you know. Unfortunately, if a situation happens when a guy has to sit out, you know, they can just plug in, you know, next man up. You know, that's how we're going to have to kind of take this if that happens.